In a day filled with so many things, Southern Girl, The Business Bar, Space 7, being a football mom, an author, also an owner of a nonprofit, which takes up most of your time? I would say a typical, in a typical day filled with so many different things pulling um, at me. Um, the kids, the businesses, all of that. I would say what takes up most of my time, definitely right now the restaurant for sure. together because I have, you know, we have everything here and I got to speak on the pain. Do you see how we living? But this is lit though. <laughs> it's so much. Story, story of my life. You know why I'm here because I don't have time to go all over the gym until get ready for everything I got going on today. Um, so the restaurant for sure takes up at least about 16 hours of my day. I'm there at least 10, but I would say, oh, maybe more than 16. It's taking up a lot. Did you get the, you you have the recipe, um, I know Blair is the button, but you have the recipe how to make the uh, specialty drink for tonight? One thing I'm missing is ice, but whatever. How do you make time for everything? I always have the right intentions every day. I say, okay, I'm gonna give this day to Southern Girl, I'm gonna give this day to the business ball, I'm gonna give this day to the kids, but they always end up being a little piece of everything every single day. And so what I have done over the past, I would say year is just ask God to just give me peace to know when I'm tired and I haven't figured it all out to just go to sleep and be okay and wake up and just kinda do what I can, you know, whatever takes priority, that's just the way I operate. So I haven't fully figured it out. Um, and I just know I'm covered, y'all. So y'all just pray for me, but it's a struggle. Trying to make time for everything, there's a lot of places that struggle. Things do suffer, you know what I'm saying? So as for me, I would say my, well, what some people may call like a personal, a personal life or like a life outside of work and family, but, but I don't really, care too much about that if that makes sense you know what I'm saying um because this is what makes me happy like I do love working and within my work I find fulfillment and then obviously after that my children so my family like that's my life you know so with suffering yeah I don't have a relationship you know what I'm saying um it's not to say that I don't deal with anyone but Obviously, at this point in time, I don't really have that amount of time to put into that. You know, I remember there was a time when I like talked to a therapist about it. She was like, you know, you got one pie, you know what I'm saying? And you only got a small piece really to, to give to a person like that. And I, and I just have to be real with people, you know what I'm saying? And understanding where I'm at, you know, I'm raising children and I'm raising businesses. And so um, I keep it all the way real, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't understand it and I'm fine with that. <laughs> I don't have time for it anyway. Um, but what I do, I try to make sure that I take care of what I would consider to be priority at that time. What, what can't wait? There's a million things that I have to do every day, but like what I try to do is like the things that's absolute, like have to be done. You know what I'm saying? That just can't wait. I deal with that. Like, for example, yeah, there was important phone calls and stuff I had to make today, but I had to turn payroll in by two o'clock. So it's like, no matter what, I know Chad had a game at three and payroll had to be turned in at two o'clock. So I ignored everything else. <laughs> it could have been, I don't know what was going on. I just knew for sure that that had to be done. And I was going to deal with everything else after that. But by the time I was done that, it was time to get together to come to the game. So. Even my hair appointment, I had to push that back because I had to make the game. You know what I'm saying? That's like my promise to him. And that's that's the way we operate. You know, it's like no matter what's going on, I am very busy, but I am not missing the game. All right! Um, I can't say I have the balance figured out or that I fully make time for everything. 
Okay. You released your book, October 2020. What makes you decide to do a book release now? All right, left hand to the door. Oh, left hand. Your right arm. Yeah, there it is. I've always wanted to write a book, I would say after I felt like I overcame what I went through. Um, but every time I tried to start, I would jot different things down, but I could never like put it together, if that makes sense, you know, to make it flow for somebody to be able to receive it the way I wanted people to be able to receive it. Um, and it wasn't until I would say mm, August, September, when I actually, after my Intentionally 31 first event, um, when I felt like, okay, when I realized my purpose, that's why I was like, okay, it's even more important for me now to release my book. I actually gave out a book for that event and I gave out the Don't Settle for Safe by Sarah. And it just started making me think like, damn, I really need to write my book, you know? And it just was a confirmation. And so I actually zoned in from that moment forward. I had no idea that um, it was gonna happen so fast, but what I did, I gave myself a deadline because I realized that's the only way I really operate when I'm under pressure. Um, so I told myself no matter what that I had to get it out by October 1st. So it's crazy because the book, um, it has some spaces in it and it definitely needs to be cleaned up a bit, but the purpose of me doing it and my message, it, it's there, you know, for sure. What do you want the takeaway um, to be from someone who reads Intentional Girl? What I want from Intentional Girl is, one, for people to know that I'm not successful because somebody handed something to me, number one, right? And I want my story to push people who have been in a situation like mine, may currently be in a situation that I've been in in the past, so anybody that's just feeling, you know, not at their best place. Um, I want them to use my story to help them get over whatever it is they're trying to get over. And just knowing that somebody that's just as regular as everybody else is still thriving in the midst of real life, you know. And so it's a self-help book and I want people to be inspired by it. You know, um, everything was intentional about the book. It's a short read. Um, I love to write, so it's so much more that I want to put into it, but I tried my best to keep it as simple as possible so that people wouldn't be overwhelmed by a long book, you know? So um, it was very intentional, everything about it, for sure. What makes it so important for you to share your space with people that you love? Hey, how you doing? How you been? Good to see you. Good, thank you. Hey, y'all. Oh, yes, happy birthday. Having a different places that we have, Space 7 in the restaurant, and being able to allow people that I'm close with, or people that I love to utilize it, has been such a blessing. Um, you know, people love to have events, people have birthday dinners and all these things, so for me to be able to have a space where I can have my people come, you know, and show them love and do it the way I want to do it, is just been amazing to me. You know what I mean? There's event spaces, there's restaurants that people can't bring balloons or you can't bring cakes or event spaces are extremely high end. So if I'm in a position to allow my people to utilize that, that makes it 10 times more greater to be able to have these businesses. All right, let me Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday. You and Jessica. It's a very unusual relationship <laughs> and friendship. What makes it so different? It's so funny because me and Jessica, we have like a very strong relationship. I'm like, always so we joke around and I'm like why do I need a man if I have somebody that just could entertain my every thought like she does fill up with like the real drink because it's good like I don't want drink I don't have any more real drink how it was a mock drink <laughs> use your eyes like yeah um it's different because I feel like a lot of people have friends and they have friends that they may share one or two things with 
or whatever. But Jessica and I, we share everything together. Um, so it's not only business, it's business, it's personal, it's our kids, it's everything. So I would say it's unusual because a person, it's, it's very hard to find somebody that you could trust in every aspect of your life. Somebody that love you just as much as you love yourself and vice versa, you know. Um, like my family is Jessica family and, and vice versa. And so I guess it's unusual because it's just something that I never really had. I've had friends, but of course, it don't always work out that well. You have family, but family, there, there's other things going on. But for somebody to always show up for you and always be there and y'all just rock with each other every single day and it's solid, it's just a far and few type of situation, I guess. As far as for how we delegate, because Jessica and I, we own two businesses together and then we are both independently branded entrepreneurs. And so how do we delegate? How do we juggle it all? What we try to do, we try to put our aces in places. My goal actually for Space 7 is I want every weekend we book. At least two to three days out the week, we book. Yeah. Every weekend, we book. Like, yeah. we because need that constant people cash been reaching flow. out, but again, like, just dealing with this, dealing with the restaurant, like, I don't have time to check Space 7 emails, so I definitely don't want to ever come off as unprofessional, you know, so that's something that was, like, bothering me, and it's just so ironic that she had been calling me for a couple days. Excuse me, days. <laughs> and I hadn't, but not on purpose. Months. She know me though. Like I just kept forgetting to call her back, but it was just the right timing. So I'm super appreciative of that um, because I was getting a little discouraged with Space Seven, but I, I know I could trust her with that, and I know, you know, that we'll be able to make some money now. Yes, ma'am, I am. A Space Seven for sure. What gives you fulfillment after a long day? I would say what gives me the most fulfillment after a long day is going home and being able to talk to my son, talk to my kids, but that bonding time where I'm able to hear my son out and just talk to him about his day, whether it's good or bad or whatever. Sometimes like you be doing the most for no reason. It's like- What you mean I'm doing the most? Aggravating sometimes, so like- What you mean? What's an example? So she said like, I was chasing somebody with a bat, like, don't even make sense, like, look at me, like, do I look like I would chase somebody with a bat, like, look how That's big I am, I don't get in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> but that's what the, that's not funny because you go fall. That's what the teacher said. Exactly. Say. I did not I did not taste nobody on the back. This is lying to you. Literally. And also just that bonding time with my daughter as well. You know, just feeling how, just seeing what she's into. That's my most fulfillment. It's like no matter what, sometimes I have a serious headache after working all day, not getting as much rest. But then when I go home and just to see how happy they are, just to talk to me, to hug me or whatever, it just makes everything so worth it. What makes it so important to have your other family members at hand's reach? Um, I'm at a place in my life right now where I realize how my presence has been so influential to my family. Right, every family has that one person that kind of like, or uh, you know, it depends who kind of like thrives in it. When that person thrives, the kind of the weight of supporting everybody kind mm -hmm. of falls on your head. So how how does how does that feel being the one? Um, it's a lot, but I don't even know if I would know how to function if it wasn't like that. If that makes sense, you know what I'm saying? My brother has been growing so much. He's come such a long way. My dad is, you know, he's up and down, but he's at a a good spot right now, and just. My presence, me speaking positivity over them or just having conversations with them, just giving them a different outlook on how they feel about things. I've seen so much how that's transformed them. And so that's more important to me now than I would say having a husband or anything like that because, you know, we only have this moment, you know what I'm saying? And just me seeing my brother for sure, the way he's grown just with me talking to him every day and just, just being present and pushing him when nobody else believes in him. Um, he ain't gonna get that from nobody else. And so, just for me to be able to be in a position, so I have a house that's big enough that we all fit into it, you know, that's everything to me. How important is self-care um, in your everyday life? Um, how do you unwind? So I believe that if you will allow me. I listened to a sermon yesterday um, from T.D. Jakes, I did, you know. Mm -hmm. It was called knowing in the noise, like knowing in the noise. But it's saying how 
Mm -hmm. Everything around us is so noisy. You know yes, and you can't hear yourself or you and can't like, stay focused. And like it'll focus. make you a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. But as long as you know, like you know what and stay positive. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's good. Self care is very important. I would say it's something that I never really paid so much attention to until now. Um, I'm very, I guess, intentional about my mental space, right? But. I guess now me trying to find time to rest, you know, I never was big on rest, 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 but I realized how much better I feel when I rest or so take just a day off, you know, and I can't say I've fully been able to take a day off, but um, me and Jessica talked about being able to fit that in, like just doing a vacation, a one day, 24 hour vacation a month, just how refreshing it is, you know, um, we went out of town recently for work, just for one day, but we told ourselves that we would, we would try to use that as a rest day, even though we're working. But it just felt good just to be away, just a different atmosphere, just to clear our minds, so to speak. Yeah. What does the next 10 years look like for Jay Newman? Lord, take what I see for sure in my next 10 years is definitely growing and capitalizing on all of my businesses for sure, but I see so many more people being connected to me and thriving. I see myself as being that powerhouse to put other people in a position to feel so good about themselves. So I don't know what that really looks like, but that is what I feel and whatever it is that it's gonna take for me to get to that point, that's what I'm doing. You know, so if building my businesses, my spiritual class, whatever it is for me to make everybody else feel good about themselves, that's, that's what I see my future, my next 10 years, just growing myself and so many other people.